Hi everyone. Um, most of you probably know me, but um, yeah, for those who don't, Robert, um, I'm a, another developer at, um, at Alembic and um, yeah, do a lot of Elixir stuff with them. And yeah, like, uh, I, yeah, we, we like to live close to the bleeding edge. Um, this is right, this talk is right on the, the, the bleeding edge. And as Paul alluded to, yes, this is, a, you know, I'm, I consider this a glorified news section rather than a, uh, a complete talk, but um, uh, nonetheless, um, it, uh, it is a, it, there's, a, there's uh, a fair amount of stuff there. So um, yes, just um, for, you know, coincidentally, I guess uh, there's, uh, Erlang has had a re, uh, very recently had a, um, a big release, OTP 24. And um, at the same time, uh, Elixir 1.12 is very close to um, coming out. Uh, it's not quite, not quite there. And there's a couple of other things um, in the Elixir ecosystem that are sort of happening at the, at the uh, uh, all at once at the moment as well too. So yes, May is quite exciting. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm back on in May 12, um, OTP 24 came out. Um, and it is the first release that has the um, the new JIT compiler, Beam Asm, um, as default, um, and um, a whole bunch of other things uh, in, in OTP twenty four that are fairly low level. Um, as the Elixir developers, we you know, depending on what you're doing, if you're doing a lot of Phoenix um, kind of stuff, or you know, at, at that higher level. Um, a lot of them are hidden away. Um, if you do happen to call out to some of the um, Elixir uh, libraries like ETS, for instance, um, there are some better error messages, which are, are nice because um, yeah, they're, um, some of them could be quite terse. At the same time, um, yes, Elixir 112 is so close. Release candidate one. So that's the second release candidate. Um, and uh, apart from being compatible and integrating with OTP24, um, there's a whole bunch of other uh, things in, in there. Um, some of the things I want to go through with that are um, yeah, some of the improvements to scripting um, uh, uh, and uh, some uh, yeah, other, other, little, other little niceties. And then outside of um, the uh, core uh, library, there's uh, live book, which I'll talk about uh, very soon, and also Axon, which is part of uh, NX. Well, in fact, live book is as well too. So um, I uh, just going to move that out of the way because that is a bit annoying, even though you can't see it. Um, uh, so this presentation that I'm actually in is a live is one of these live books and it's up on it's going to, all the files up on uh, will be up on GitHub. So what is live book? So live book is a, um, a sort of a, an official uh, interactive code notebook for Elixir. Uh, it's built with uh, live view and it's built. Um, it's sort of associated with the NX team um, and NX being the numerical Elixir. Um, uh, project, which I talked about a couple of months ago. Uh, I was using a sort of a, uh, you know, an independent uh, li uh, live uh, notebook uh, called NIEX, but I, uh, so I don't know what's going to happen with that, but because, um, yeah, live book has come out and it, it already is, you know, quite ahead of where um, NIEX was. Um, yeah, and as, as you can see, it's part of the Elixir NX project. Go check it out there. All right. So, OTP 24. Um, so yes, the environment is a code notebook. We can mix mark, uh, Markdown, I should say, with, um, with Elixir fragments, and then we can come along here and evaluate them. So yeah, just um, proving that yes, I am indeed running on um, OTP 24. Um, I wish I could pipe that into something that would generate a, um, a logo for the popular TV series or give, give us random um, Keith of Sutherland, Sutherland um, images, but I did, ran out of time. Um, so 
the big change in OTP24 is the, the um, bringing Beam as an in by default as, uh, as you know, the new just-in-time compiler. Um, so what Beam ASM does is, um, yeah, it converts at load time Beam files into native um, x86-64. Um, and uh, yeah, rather than, um, rather than uh, dispatching different um, uh, Beam instructions to functions that, um, that are, that are um, potentially handwritten and slow, um, yeah, it can, um, uh, it, uh, it can instead um, dispatch out to um, just in time natively compiled code. And um, some of the advantages with you know just in time compilers in general that um, that Beam Asm allows is you know, the specialization on types and things like that. Um, so there's um, some really good documentation um, if you're interested um, about how it works um, on the Erlang.org website. Um, but just a little bit of detail about what, uh, what it is under the covers. Uh, there's an, uh, another project um, called ASMJIT, which is used for a few runtimes, but I, I would say Erlang's probably the biggest project that, that, that's using it. And what ASMJIT is, is a C++ just-in-time compiler, or code generator, I should say. Um, so it's just the back end. It's much simpler and much faster than um, uh, compiler infrastructures like LLVM. Um, it just does the code generation. So you have to optimize everything by hand, um, but it generates code a lot faster and um, the, it itself is much smaller. LLVM, LLVM is massive. Um, so um, it, yeah, uh, Beam as a, is a long time coming. There are different people in Erlang have um, for uh, many years tried to uh, implement a just-in-time compiler to um, replace hype which was a, um, uh, an earlier implementation. And um, yeah, after many returns to the drawing board, they finally uh, arrived at something that seems good. Um, so yes, uh, just in time, the just-in-time compilation is enabled by default in OTP24 for the first time. So if we, um, if we get that um, bit of information out of our runtime, we can see it says JIT. And JIT will also come up if you open an IEX terminal as well too. So once um, you roll forward to your versions, you'll eventually see that when you're in, in, in I, uh, IEX sessions. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, the main reason to do just-in-time compilation is for performance. Um, I haven't looked into the, um, the, uh, the JIT in a great amount of detail or read um, the documentation um, above here much so there's a bit of um yeah most of the information i've seen is anecdotal in like you know, meetups or conference talks or whatever um so um the one of the goals in terms of performance was to not blow out the code memory size um what, what happens with um, some just-in-time comp compilation um or compilers is that you end up having a lot more um, memory allocated for your, you know, many, many native instructions compared to um, a, a few um, interpreter instructions. And so you would, you'd lose some of the benefits um, if you start getting cache misses, etc. So they've tried to keep that at a minimum. And the, the other day I was on a meetup, uh, an Elixir meetup in, where was it? Birmingham, uh, Alabama, I think. Um, that just happened to line up time zone wise and Robert Birding was there and uh, he, um, I, well, yeah, it was, I, I, actually, yeah, some, um, uh, yeah, what, how long ago was that? Anyway, it was, it was a while ago now, actually, maybe a month or two, and he was staying on the order of 10% um, code size. So that's not too bad. You, you know, your, um, you know, your code memory increases by 10% to get a benefit of just in time. Uh, performance. On the CPU side, um, again, I haven't um, seen any really, um, I guess, scientific benchmarks um, uh, and really, you know, look, doing benchmarks on the, the compiler across, you know, real workloads is, a, is, a, is more than a talk in itself. So I took um, a, a really basic um, 
example from Benchy, which is a, be a benchmarking library in Elixir. Um, put some a bit more maths in it uh, uh, so that you know, the expression is a bit more complex. Um, and then uh, did some uh, uh, lists and um, <clears throat> some list uh, manipulation just to um, just to see. So I ran this um, the, uh, this benchmark on uh, Elixir eleven with OTP twenty three and on um, uh, uh, that should be one dot one dot eleven and one dot twelve. Um, so yeah, run ran it with 1.12 on OTP 24. And Benchy says that um, uh, the, the newer version is 7% faster based on this you know, tiny little micro benchmark. And as we all know, you, you, you know, they, they, they hardly mean anything. So uh, yeah, a lot more work, I think, would need to be done by someone to, to, um, to see what the benefits are. Or you know, maybe that has been done, I just didn't find it. Um, so yeah, if you are interested, you may have to go searching for um, the benefits. But yeah, I've um, as I said up here, um, I've heard widely differing speed ups quoted thirty percent, fifty percent, hundreds of percent for some things, which I find hard to believe. But um, yeah, we'll, we will see uh, what happens. But I mean, seven percent for something, you know, for just upgrading a version, it's nothing to, um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that's that's. Uh, yeah, that's not bad. Um, so that's the just in time compiler. Another mm, so interesting and uh, welcome uh, change in OTP 24 is this EEP 54, which I believe stands for Erlang Extension Process 54, a bit like a, a JSR or whatever they were. What would they? Um, Java, something or others. Anyway, um, yeah, Erlang have the same kind of thing. Um, and this particular one um, extends error information in a lot of the built-in functions. Um, and um, so that's that's been implemented um, and available in OTP 24. And yeah, the, the obligatory example of how this will improve our lives is um, good old argument error where literally from many, um, uh, many uh, function calls in, in, um, in Erlang, um, you'll, you'll simply get, um, if you do something wrong, in this case, you know, ETS uh, insert, uh, you, get an, uh, you get an argument error, but it doesn't tell you which argument is wrong or why. Um, so if, yes. If I uh, run that now, however, in um, on OTP twenty four, we get something that's slightly better. So in this case, it says the first argument um, is the problem, and this table identifier reference doesn't exist. So that we haven't created the table first, um, the the ETS table. So um, then. If we have something wrong with the second argument, if um, uh, if the second argument to inserting into ETS has to be a tuple, yeah, it's key because it's yeah, ETS is t a key value pair, uh, effectively store key value pair store, um, and yeah, it's telling us it's not uh, the second argument is not a tuple, so that's much much more useful than just saying you've got an argument error, go away, fix it, uh, and I'm not going to tell you what's wrong. And yeah, apparently that's 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 all that's been implemented all across the, the code base. So yeah, that that's that's nice. Um, and yeah, there's lots of other um, lower level changes and bug fixes, etc., um, documented in a um, you know, um, sort of the, the uh, top level way, high level way in a news item on the Erlang website. So for for OTP twenty four, that's about as much as I sort of got through and thought was. Useful, so we'll move on to Elixir 112. So at the moment, um, yeah, there's RC1 of 112 available, and that is, um, that's the second, and I assume final um, uh, version. Uh, one of the big changes is the introduction of a, uh, of a mix function called mix install. Um, and you call it with um, a list of dependencies, like you would in your mix file. Um, and you uh, in you call that in your scripts, and 
you that means you don't have to set up a mix project um, etc for the mix uh, for those dependencies to be downloaded and available in your script um, uh, so I've got some code examples that sort of are a bit um, a, a bit opaque um, because you you can call mix install directly in um, uh, in live book but it, it behaves differently to than what I wanted to demonstrate here. So what I'm doing is actually calling out to a separate Elixir process um, with some code um, to, to, show, um, to show the benefit of all what mix install does. So if we don't have, in this case, poison, a, a, um, JSON library installed and we run this code, um, it's, you know, it, it will, uh, our script will, would come back and say, um, poison and code is undefined because the module poison is not available, um, and you know we haven't um, we haven't installed it. Um, however, if we run the same code but uh, uh, prepend mix install um, of the library, and this is you know this is pretty much the same format as um, uh, as you would need in. Um, uh, in your mix file, except in this case, because we're not worried about versions, we just put the uh, put the the the, um, the symbol there, and we run that. Uh, it's going to think for a while uh, and potentially download uh, Poison, compile it all up, and then we get we actually are able to encode "Hello World" into JSON and print it out. So yes, as I say in the comments here. The, mm, this whole thing I've done here is a bit of a hack, but if you if you do need to do Elixir scripts, um, yeah, the, or um, you uh, install libraries into a live book, um, mix mix install is the way to go. Um, Sorry, if you reevaluate that right now, does it kind of re-download? Uh, it will in my case, but um, I think because I have forced true in there if not it, it i don't think it does um uh, yeah uh, so if thanks yeah at some point it's um it does you know build up a cache somewhere in um so i believe you have to have you have to have mix installed and mix has um various paths and so libraries get downloaded into that global that global cache um but i believe you know force blows that away um each time um so um, yes, uh, yeah, you run your script once and it will take a long time, but subsequent, um, so subsequent runs uh, will be, should be fast. Cool. Um, then, yeah, in Elixir, there's a whole bunch of um, new functions or you know, fixes. So I thought I'd run through some very quickly. Um, so we can, we can trap signals now. Um, basically just got something here that's going to send um, and uh, um, the um, SIG uh, user two. Um, so again, a bit of hacky code here to actually get all this to work in, a, in the context of a live book. But, you know, I'm sending the kill command um, to, to um, uh, the, the OS PID, not the, not the Erlang PID of my, uh, of of this live book here, um, getting the message and printing it out. So hopefully that will run. Yeah, got C user two. So basically, yeah, trapping that trapping that signal and doing something, getting it back in into myself. And yeah, again, all this this gymnast, gymnastics with processes and that sort of thing is purely to get it working in in this in this demo. But um, yeah, uh, trapping of signals is uh, I. I did in a previous life have to worry about trapping signals um, because of the, you know, where, where my stuff was getting deployed into and it was a bit of a pain in the butt and the way it was getting executed. Um, so yeah, I think um, the, um, uh, yeah, being able to trap signals and do stuff gracefully with OT, uh, with um, like, yeah, OTP, like gen servers and, and um, that sort of thing would be a, a uh, yeah, would would make certain people's, especially in the Opsy world, uh, their life a lot um, a lot light, a lot nicer. Um, 
in the kernel library, um, there's a couple of new functions, to, uh, then and tap. So um, there, and they're both um, to help with um, making pipelines less messy. Um, so if we um, if we have a, um, a pipeline where, where we want to um, convert some map into a, into a struct, the problem is that there is a, uh, like a, a, a struct uh, function in, in kernel, but the, um, uh, the, the thing that you typically, typically want to weave through a pipeline, this map is actually the second, um, the second argument. So um, uh, uh, in, yeah, so uh, what um, what uh, this this first example is doing is sort of the the old way without then, um, and uh, basically an, an writing an anonymous function that uh, swap uh, you know, swaps the arguments kind of, um, uh, and you know of course if we had if we had flip we we wouldn't need to worry about it, but um, yeah, so there's a little bit of uh, anonymous function gymnastics happening there. Um, but if we try that again uh, with using then, um, we you know it, it works uh, and um, yeah it's a it's a lot uh, it's a lot more compact. We can you know, pass struct in as an anonymous function and um, uh, yeah uh, it will uh, we we can put that that argument that we're threading through this map anywhere we want in this call the struct. So yeah that's kind of nice. Um, Tap um, is a bit more uh, a bit more intuitive. Um, what tap does is it uh, allows you to, uh, in a pipeline, uh, you know, tap off the value to some uh, some other function. Uh, typically, you it would if it's side effecty, um, but um, the function itself doesn't return um, the the value it's operating on. So if we have this side effect uh, function here that takes some argument and does some side effect with it, but doesn't return um, doesn't return the the argument to continue on in the, in this pipeline. We can use tap to call out to that side effect and then keep uh, keep going. So if we yeah again yeah if, if we run this um, you know we've we've passed hello through it's re been reversed and printed out, um, but at the same time we've run this side effect which has sent sent a message to ourselves and we. Um, receive that down here and um, uh, yeah and print that out and I've got the the uh, time out there just in case um, things go wrong so if I run that um, yeah the time it does work and in fact if we don't have this after at all I think um, a sort of a meta note about live book is that it actually it actually does kill stuff um, if it if it finds that there's some kind of runaway process, um, so you don't you, yeah it's kind of safe to do you know low level things like receive inside this live environment. Um, another feature, step ranges. Um, so this is saying give me the range one to ten um, in step in, um, you know by two. So and this one is zero to ten by two. Um, and yeah, we're dub doubling the numbers. So this first one does start at one. Um, you know, so it's one, three, five, seven, nine. And this one is doubling, you know, uh, zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. Um, uh, I haven't looked at the, the sort of full reason that they're pushing this, but pretty much this is going to be the new way of doing ranges. So at some point, range, uh, range without a step is I think is going to be deprecated if I understand the, the um, what I've read and heard correctly. So, yeah. Um, so this avoid this this avoids having to um, having to do a reduce and skip uh, steps, etc. Um, Long-awaited zip with functions uh, in um, uh, enum and stream. So we can um, yeah we can uh, yeah, zip. Uh, Zip, zip two or, or more um, enumerables together um, with with some function. Uh, he would just yeah add it, adding the the, the um, uh, 
respective um, elements together. And yeah, stream also has it as well too. Um, and again, like OTP24, there's, yeah, there's you know, massive numbers of um, uh, amounts of bug fixes and other little, uh, little improvements. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty well documented in the last two release candidate releases on GitHub. So I'm not sure if that by default that shows us, shows the pre-releases, but if you go to the uh, Elixir Lang um, uh, GitHub releases page and click on pre-releases, you'll get um, uh, you'll, the last two, RC1 and RC0, mainly RC0 actually, um, have a lot of detail about all the little fixes. There's lots of um, you know tiny little tweaks here and there to the um, to a lot of the standard library um, and associated things. Um, and last but not least, uh, this month or last month, I can't remember exactly when, um, a library called Axon was uh, was released by the NX the Elixir NX team. So Axon is a neural net library and it's the one that we everyone's been asking for and um and and waiting for so sean um moriarty um who did a lot of work on the base elixir nx has you know released axon it's on the yes yeah, on the same umbrella uh, <clears throat> um, repo as as the rest of nx and um it, um, yeah, it basically uh, abstracts away all the low level stuff you need to do with NX to, to, build, um, to build neural nets. I only have part of an example, um, I ran out of time, but here, here's mix install, how you'd actually use it, um, like if you're doing your own code notebooks or your own scripts. So this could be an EXS file or what have you. Um, so we're installing Axon and, and, and NX, and you can see that, um, yeah, it's pretty much the same the same um, uh, format as um, what you need in in your um, in your mix.exs files for dependencies. Um, so if I evaluate that, um, so I've already yeah already downloaded Axon and NX and they're sitting in sitting in my cache somewhere. So, um, but you um, the first time that this runs, it would output all the you know all the information about downloading these and compiling etc. and all the associated warnings. If there were any, um, and then yeah, we've built a model. So basically, um, we have you know an imp um, this model is an input um, the you know uh, and it has an input layer and a couple of um, a couple of uh, dense layers um, and um, a an activation function and yeah the um, the um, this through this sort of fluent interface um, pipeline, we get um, yeah, it spits out a little description of what of what that model is. Um, yeah, so um, the um, you know, the the shape and uh, parameters, etc. And then yeah, there are other function calls to um, to actually train models and uh, and, and test, etc. Um, yeah, I ran out of time to um, to put all that in. And also, I don't have a link. Maybe it's in here, but yeah, Jose um, did a, a a talk where he redid his original like sort of NX announcement talk, but he redid it with Axon to show um, the um, the benefits of um, yeah the, of operating at this high level. This um, is going to run in a GPU when when NX supports GPUs. Uh, yes, it will. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, NX does. Uh, I um, I haven't still haven't um, haven't played with it. Um, the the the, um, uh, the uh, CUDA uh, um, the uh, the XLA Google XLA implementation e e XLA I think it is, and there's also one for um, Torch. As well, so yeah, in in this repo in Elixir NX, there's a couple of other um, couple of other libraries that do the that do the GPU stuff, and it's just a matter of um, uh, yeah of making sure you can compile that on your system, and then setting the um, configuration. Um, and there's a few different points where you can say I want this particular part of my um, of my you know uh, tensor calculations to be to be done with. Um, you're done on the GPU, and you can also choose to like keep keep the results, the tensors on the GPU to avoid having to sort of 
you know, the you know the thrashing of memory between the CPU and the and the GPU. So and that 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 that's what produces the you know, thousand time you know four thousand times speed up or whatever it is over over you know. Um, um, uh, elixir and i think it's even four thousand times over using simd instructions so yeah it's you know super fast um if you can get all that working um yeah so that, i mean that stuff is sort of working now i just haven't had a chance to to play with it and get you know get it um get the libraries compiled on my system um uh, but yeah it's a, exciting uh, exciting times so yeah that's all i had um uh, yeah, a bit more than a glorified um, news item, I guess. But um, yeah, uh, hopefully there's some interesting stuff in there. And yeah, check out the release notes, etc. For um, yeah, to see what else other interesting things that might help you are, are in those uh, in those releases. So yes, thank you very much for your attention, and I'll open the floor to any more questions. Thanks very much, Rob. If anyone's got any questions, yeah, please uh, please feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, and also, if you possibly can, turn your video on as well. And, uh, and yeah, fire away. Hey, uh, Rob, I was wondering, do you run into problems with um, libraries that require compile time app config sort of stuff uh, when you're using them from a script? Like, can, can you um, define those configurations prior to sort of like in, compiling and running those? That is a good question. I haven't tried that. Um, uh, I, mm, it's, it has been a while since I've written any, any Elixir scripts, but I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I seem to recall having to start OTP applications manually and stuff like that. You, um, a bit like with, um, with X unit, that sort of thing, or uh, when you have to, uh, yeah, ensure all started or whatever the um, the flag is, uh, yeah, I presume it would be it would be um, similar to that. But that, yeah, that's a good yeah, that's a good good question. I um, uh, I I don't know if there is a um, yeah if if that if that would um, trip you up, it it probably would. Yeah, it's been so. Yeah, it's been a it's been a yeah. I think. It, Right at the very start of my time at Telstra, I did a couple of things with scripts, but um, yeah, since then, it, I've uh, purged most of that from my from my <laughs> from my working memory. Well, if, if you didn't run into any problems with it to get this far, it can't be too bad. Mm.